Hello dear students, welcome to the lecture uh, 6 of Introduction to Programming. I will uh, start with a quick recap of the previous lecture. So we have seen the uh, arrays in details. Multidimensional arrays, array copy, jagged arrays, and difference between multidimensional arrays and jagged arrays. List, uh, list functions, array functions, methods and logical negation operator and such so today we are going to see for for each do and while loops thread sleep tripods vpf labels text boxes uh, this week i am going to start with a uh, create new project and a vpf project so we are starting uh, vpf uh, projects if you wonder what is vpf Okay, you see there are uh, a lot of information related to VPF. Okay. Windows Presentation Foundation WPF, is a UI framework that creates desktop client applications. The WPF development platform supports a broad set of application development features, including an application model, resources, controls, graphics, layout, data binding, documents, and security. The framework is part of .NET, so if you have previously built applications with .NET using ASP.NET or Windows Forms, the programming experience should be familiar. WPF uses the extensible application markup language XAML to provide a declarative model for application programming. There is also Windows Forms, which was the previous uh, standard for desktop applications. Let's get an idea about Windows Forms as well. So let's check the general view okay here windows forms designer in visual studio provides a rapid development solution for creating windows forms based applications Windows Forms Designer lets you easily add controls to a form, arrange them, and write code for their events. For more information about Windows Forms, see Windows Forms Overview. Okay, so uh, Windows Forms is rather older technology, so we are going to start with uh, VPF. I'm going to I am going to selecting VPF.NET Core. Uh, alternatively you can select .NET Framework as well and however the uh, latest technology is .NET Core so I'm going to select it and let's select our uh, project folder lecture 6 okay Okay, so we are going to start using a graphical interface with VPF. Uh, we will have a window and from that window we will be able to uh, design uh, more visual uh, applications. Uh, so we are moving from command line to uh, VPF, window forms. This is kind of window forms, however this is the advanced uh, technology we can say that uh, so it has a design window it has XAML code XML okay it uses uh, XAML code like this and you will get used to understand uh, how XAML builds the application design interface okay uh, so to use, uh, let's just uh, run the application first and see how it looks.
By the way, I believe you have noticed the uh, clearness and smoothness of my voice. It is much better now. It should be much better now because I have purchased, a, as I said, professional microphone and a very good uh, sound card. Also, I am trying to reduce the noise in my room. It also affects a lot. Okay, so this is uh, our application window interface, as you can see. Okay. So there is toolbox here. I am clicking toolbox, uh, and you see there are common VPF controls and all VPF controls. Today we are going to start with uh, four loops. So I am dragging a button here like this. Okay, left clicking and dragging a button here. A button here is uh, composite. You see, I can uh, move it around on my uh, window to set its place. I can change its size like this. You see, when I, whenever I make a change on it, the value is here changes. So the height is changed to uh, 76 pixel and the width has changed to 117 pixel. And there is also margin as you can see the margins are the uh, distance of each side so this is distance from the left you see uh, 53 here as you can see this is distance from uh, I believe top okay so you can you can see it is uh, 37 and these are the other uh, margins currently they are automatic zero means automatically and there is vertical alignment top and height so when i double click on this button it will create an event a click event alternatively i can go to properties window here by the way to open properties window you can right click on button and okay from right click there is no properties you can click on button and it was somewhere here i believe okay with okay properties window it is also it has a shortcut as f4 so let me show what i mean i'm clo closing the properties window then i am clicking the button so the current button is selected you can see it is highlighted uh, and also highlighted here then i am clicking the weave menu and i'm clicking the properties window and it is getting opened so i am going to give a name to my button first to access it from behind I can give its name from either here properties window or from here. I will use uh, the easier way at the moment the properties window so it will be button for loop. So this is the name of the element after I click here or somewhere else it is updated here as well as you can see. So after I type it here I, I need to click enter or click somewhere else to get it's called updated so this is the name of the button and with that name i can access it from the code behind which we will list, which we will see uh, uh, in a moment then the content of the button uh, is the text of button displayed here i can also set it from uh, somewhere around here i think Okay, there is events and properties. When I click properties, you see there is uh, text. Text uh, defines uh, how the text will be displayed on that button. So I'm going to select like this Broadway and I'm going to increase the size pixels to 24 pixel. If you wonder what is pixel, our screens are composed by pixels. Currently my screen display is 1920 pixel product uh, 1080 pixel so to illustrate what i mean i'm going to take a screenshot with print screen then i'm going to open my uh, 
paint software paint.net which I use a lot it's a great software and I'm going to paste my screenshot to this software so when I hover I, you will start to see that my screen is composed by single pixels as the smallest element so we are currently zoomed by uh, 6,400 percent so you see this is a pixel okay each one is pixel when I click here it will show me display pixel grid so you see this is actually how my screen is composed of it is composed by pixels everywhere is from pixels okay so this is the uh, pixels of my screen and then I hover I can see the single color of pixels each pixel is composed by a single color to learn that color code I can click the color picker and when I click the pixel and when I click more from colors window I can see the color code of that pixel okay so these are not related to our course at the moment but I am giving you a general idea these are pixels and 12 pixel or we have set it as 24 pixel uh, font size so let's check the font size here so this is 16 pixel height as you can see okay so let's see for example this letter is 21 pixel okay so when i set the font size it the letters are being printed like this if I set it bigger, it becomes bigger. And currently, I'm going to set it uh, as 18 pixel. Then I'm going to change the text itself. Where from where I can change it? You see, there is content. The content property of this element can be set to any arbitrary value, including simple string values. So I'm going to set the content as for loop example and i click enter so you see the content is changed from here you can change it from here as well whatever you can do from properties window or events you can do it same from here because in the end whatever you do at the properties window it will be applied to here because this is what the software reads the software reads the xaml language okay it doesn't there is not nothing else actually this is just an interface to make our job easy i mean the properties window is just an interface that makes our job easier so actually you can change the values from here as well for example let's change the font family i'm hoping that it will give me a drop down oh it didn't give me a drop down okay i'm going to make it ohama if i remember correctly or okay when i change it at the time new times new roman i'll take okay it is changed here as well so okay so i'm going to click a uh, i'm going to compose a click event you can double click on this button or you can go to click events or event handlers uh, window and double click on click event or enter click event so when my cursor is on click event here i'm going to click enter Oh, enter didn't work so i need to double click on it when i double click you see a click event is created at the uh, background code in the class file okay so this is the class file of, of this window you see it is named as like this so a method for the click event is generated it is generated as private void and the uh, uh, name of my button plus uh, uh, this one and then click word then it takes two parameters object sender which is my button and rotate events arcs which is a uh, click we will see them in uh, future lessons don't worry about them so in the xml code a click event is created like this okay so i am going to 
define a string here and make a debug to see how it works. Equal to hello world. Okay. Then I'm going to put a breakpoint here to debug it. Okay. So I'm going to run my application. When you have a syntax error on XML code here, it will not run. It will not comp compile and the application will not run. Okay. So be careful about that. And when you have an error here, it will be also displayed with underlining. Okay. The application is started now. So when I hover my mouse over the button, you see it is highlighted. And when I click it, you see it has entered the click event method, which is this one. Then uh, my, my test string is currently null because it is just defined but not initialized. And when I step over, you see it is initialized now and it has now hello world. Okay, so what we are going to do is we have already seen strings. First, I will show you a mess message box method, which is very useful. Message box method has a message box class. Actually, it is class of system windows. You see here and system is already added here and system windows is also added here. The others are, as you can see, they are grayed out, which means they are not actively being used at the moment. Okay, then I am going to use show method of uh, message box class, and I am going to print this string to the screen. This is not like printing as in command line. Uh, this is more like a pop-up message. You will see in a moment. This is a feature of Windows Forms and v uh, VPF. Okay, when I click the button, you see my uh, message box is displayed with hello world. And until I close that message box, you see I cannot click the window again or I cannot click anything on the window again. So this is blocking the entire user interface. I can close it either by X button or OK button. I'm clicking OK and it's closed. So this is message box. I'm going to comment it. Okay, it is commented out. So let's start with a for loop. You can use for snippet to generate for loop. When I click top button two times, double tap, it will automatically insert it. Okay, so currently i variable i is highlighted which means when i type something it will be automatically change it okay i have renamed the i then when i click top button it will rename the other i element then it is uh, highlighted the uh, let's say the condition this is the condition when will this loop end. So it will start from begin index and it will loop until this condition is satisfied or dissatisfied in this case. So it can be, I am changing it like 10. Then when I click top button, it is returned back to highlighting uh, the first parameter. Okay. So this is a general uh, architecture of and when I click escape, uh, the highlighting is ended. Uh, this is the general arch architecture of uh, for loop. So I'm going to start running it by one by one. So it starts with four keyboard then you open and close parentheses like this. Then you define a number as a starting index. Uh, you don't have to define it. It can be uh, alternate. It, there can be alternative ways, but at the moment, uh, just follow what I am doing. So I am typing an integer. It can be other numerical types as well or uh, other things. So it will be 
index, uh, let's say starting index, and then I will set it to zero, and then to uh, finish definition and initialization, I am putting a, a semicolon like this. Then I am writing the uh, condition. Okay until when this for loop will continue i want for loop to be executed or loop 10 times then i am writing like this until starting index is uh, lower than or let's say meanwhile starting index is lower than 10 continue looping through then at each loop, I am going to increase my starting index like this plus plus. Okay, this plus plus is equal to this. So you can type it like this as well. Okay, both works. This one. Okay, so inside this for loop, uh, that, uh, I can do whatever I want by using these numbers. These numbers, what is the scope of these numbers, by the way? The scope of these numbers is these square brackets. Okay, after, outside of these square brackets, these numbers, this number actually does not exist. That It is why we can define it uh, two times with the same name in the same class as you can see because this number only exists only live within this scope okay what i mean is i'm going to show it with uh rubbing. so uh, this variable let's okay this variable ir standard index only exists within this scope okay this is the scope of this number when you are out of this scope which is a starting square bracket and finishing square bracket you can't access this number let's try it for example can i do like this equal to five can I do like this? No, it will give an error. It will say that the name IR starting index does not exist in the current context because this is only exists in here and here. By the way, the existence of this variable in here and in here are completely different because when you are out of scope, it is destroyed because it is not defined in anywhere else. Okay. So this is living only inside here and this is living only inside here. Okay, so what I am going to do is I am going to uh, add this for loop into a list. Okay. Loop it uh, numbers. I'm naming it like that and then name list. Then I am going to insert the loop numbers into this list like this way. Okay. So this is a sim uh, simple for loop and let's uh, uh, debug and see how it works in uh, practice. So I'm going to put a breakpoint here. By the way, I'm just ignoring this. It will just uh, pass by. Okay. I am clicking my button. Okay, so when I hover my index over starting index, it is zero. Okay. Why it is zero? Because it is not defined yet or assigned to a number yet. However, since it is defined in this context, it is assigned to zero. 
what I mean is let me change it to start from one and put my breakpoint here let's see what I mean with this example okay when I click my button okay when I hover my mouse over I are starting index it is not existing currently in my application because it was created here and then destroyed and it is not composed yet on here you see my local variables are shown in left bottom window here if you click local you will see whatever available what values this is available this means the win for, uh, windows form itself okay and there is sender sender is the button the button which one which we have clicked the event e is a uh, rotated event rgs arcs we will see that in future and my test string here is existing and then the my list is existing and it is still null because we have just defined it in this context however we haven't used it so when i go to the next step this starting index will become available however it will be zero by default this is available it is null by default because it is a class uh, type value object and this is struct type object okay i am going to click step over okay and now my list is initialized and it has zero items as you can see here also now in this context my ir starting index is available and it is by default zero because it is defined however it is not assigned yet it will be assigned when this step is executed so the first uh, step in for loop is executed at here the first step is defined by the first semicolon so first it will be it will execute this part of the for loop so i'm clicking a uh, step over okay so this is executed this part and now i can see the value of my ir starting index as one when i hover it i can see its value as one okay so currently it is at this step this step is the uh, let's say uh, checking checking whether that condition is satisfied or not if this condition is valid it it is satisfied it will move to the next step okay so it is checking the current value of ir starting index which is one if it is smaller than 10 this is the number i have defined it will move to the next step okay so i'm clicking step over so the next step is getting inside of uh the for loop scope which is here okay so this part of the equation uh, let's say the for loop is still not executed it will be it will get executed until after the execution inside this scope has ended so i'm continuing with step over okay so now my number is one and i am adding that number into my list it is empty and i am clicking step over so now my uh, list has one item you see it is you can also see it from here it has count one and when i hover my mouse over list you see i can see as the first item index zero item is one okay then you see the uh, for loop scope is uh, ended therefore it will move to the next step which is the execution of this okay the execution steps are separated by semicolon okay semicolon is always has to be put in for loop and when i click step over you see now it is the it is executing this part and in this part we are going to increase starting index by one okay uh, so i'm going to click step over okay so now it is continuing with second step 
This first initialization, initialization step is only executed once when the for loop is first time uh, entered, called. Okay, so we will never get this step again, and it will continue with executing this step, then inside scope, and then this step. So the number value in, has been increased by one within this step so the value is now two and it will check again whether that uh, condition is satisfied or not whether it is true or false so currently this is true you see it the mutual studio also showing me as true here so it will continue execution of the uh, scope again so it will add the number into my list again and when I click next, uh, the step over, so now it is going to execute this step again. So the number will become three. Okay. Now it will check the condition again. Okay. So if three is smaller than 10, it will get into the uh, scope again. So this will continue until when. Okay. Whenever I move my steps, you, you see this number is increasing. I can do alternatively this. Whenever I click run execution to here, it will run the execution until there. You see, the number is increasing. Okay, now it is 8. And now it is 9. Okay, at the next step, it the condition will become uh, not true anymore. Half. Okay, let's see. So now it is going to execute this step. The number is currently 9. And after it is increased by 1, it will become 10. Okay. So it is becoming 10. And then it is checking whether the condition is correct or not. Okay. So if 10 is smaller than 10, it will be true. Is that true? Is 10 is smaller than 10? false because 10 is equal to 10 okay so the for loop will end it will not get into this here it will not get into the scope of for anymore so when i click step over you see the for loop has ended and now my list contains 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 okay so let's make some more uh uh practice i am going to reset the number in inside list of numbers by clear so it deletes all the objects elements inside the list you see when i hover my mouse over clear method it says me that removes all elements from the list t okay you see in C sharp, it shows T as a generic. Currently, this list is int type. It could be string type, it could be double type, or whatever any class type you define. We will see about classes in future. Okay, so the list is cleared again. Now I'm going to copy and paste this to make a different example. I will make the starting index as minus two. So when this execution is run uh, which values will this uh, list contain try to guess it okay this time it will start from minus two and the rest will be same let's run the application you see, this time I have put my breakpoint here, so it, it, uh, the application will run until this breakpoint, and then uh, it will uh, wait my commands. So I'm going to click, and when I check the list, you see minus two, minus one, zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay. So I'm going to do another example. Okay, this time I'm going to make starting index as zero and the condition staying same. However, I'm going to increase the index by three. 
So, guess which value is would the LST loop numbers contain? Okay. Or let's make it two for uh, simplicity and uh, thinking. Okay, which numbers would the list have? But if I increase each time uh, the condition, okay. So it will contain, let's do it by manually. First, zero will be added. Okay. Then the zero will become two and two is smaller than 10 it will be added okay then it will become four four is smaller than 10 okay then it will become six six is smaller than 10 so six will be added then it will become eight eight is smaller than 10 then it will be added and it will become 10 10 is not smaller than 10 so it will contain these numbers let's try to see Okay, so you see zero, two, four, six, seven. Okay, so let's uh, increase our algorithm complexity or the uh, program complexity. So I'm going to make a starting index as zero again, and I'm going to make it smaller than or equal to ten. So this time. Uh, which numbers would it have? It would have this plus 10. Because now it checks that whether it is smaller than 10 or not. Okay. So the equality is also accepted in this check. Okay. And let's uh, run the application with a breakpoint. Okay, let's check the list. Okay, you see 0, 2, 4, 6, 7, uh, uh, 6, 8, and 10. Okay. Okay, now I am going to show another example. I will increase by 3 and here I will decrease by 1. So, what would be the values inside LST loop numbers in this case? Okay, uh, I want you to pause the video and try to guess yourself. Okay, so that's uh, start writing them first it will start with zero then it will become minus one here then it will be increased by three so it will become two then the two will be added then it will become one here then it will be increased by three and it will become four so the four will be added then it will become three here then it will be increased by three and it will become six then it will be added here then it will become five and by increase of three it will become eight okay then it will become seven here then it will be increased by three it will become ten so the ten will be also satisfied and it will end okay let's uh, see whether our um, guess was correct or not Okay, I'm clicking the loop. Okay, so it is starting with zero. And next step, it is checking whether it is smaller or equal to 10 or not. True. Then at next step, it is getting inside here. So the zero will be added. Okay, we see. Oh, we didn't clear uh, the list. So first, let's clear the list. Okay. 
actually I'm going to put the breakpoint here so you can see how clear works okay so the list contains these values currently and output clear command it becomes zero raw wheel is empty so count is zero okay so we have seen the zero okay so current it is two or i mean minus one and it becomes two after increase by three and you see it is checking against ten then it is adding two to the list then it will become one after execution of this step okay it is one and let's run the rest continue so now you see it is exactly as we have guessed this is equal to uh, this is same as Okay, let's make the things a bit more interesting so this time i will say that uh, ir starting index is uh, bigger than 10 okay and the starting index will be 100 and at each step i'm still increasing by three would this loop ever end okay would this condition become ever incorrect this condition think about that would, would my application reach this point uh, ever so let's run the application and see so i'm going to put a breakpoint here as well okay current list has zero items and starting index will be set to 100 and if it is bigger than 10 it will be stopped uh, i mean as long as it is bigger than 10 it will continue i just said incorrectly so it is adding the number then it is increasing the index by three so it is now 103 so when I click continue, check the numbers here. Okay. Okay, so it is frozen. The application is frozen. I'm going to put a breakpoint here. Okay, application is paused. So you see now it has how many elements inside it. Okay, I just click it a uh, terrible but it is trying to display the numbers of uh, list box the list box currently has okay i'm counting 268 million four hundred thirty five thousand four hundred fifty seven elements so the loop has been going on over 200 million times you see account so my starting index is currently how much it is it is uh, uh, eight it is over 800 millions as you can see so this never ends this loop never ends and the application will crash after this uh, integer number exists maximum integer value the maximum integer value is 2 billion and some there is some extra value how can we ex uh, calculate the maximum value of integer it is simple this is a uh, uh, signet integer therefore it it can be maximum 2 over 31 because it is 32 bits and one bit is used for the sign it is either minus or positive so it can be maximum 2 billion and 148 million and so uh, so on i will make it uh, google read it uh, j 
2,147,483,648. Okay. So I will run, uh, continue running application and you will see how it crashes in a moment. The application is also frozen because it is uh, using all CPU power and in the main thread. Okay, we are waiting until our application crashes. In the meantime, it also increases the RAM memory usage because the list is getting bigger at any second. You see it is using over 1 GB RAM memory at the moment. Oh, it is using over 2 GB. I hope that my computer doesn't crash. Okay, it uses some ra uh, hard disk. Why? Because uh, since my RAM memory was almost full, it used the hard disk as a uh, cache memory. Okay, it is still not crashed. Okay. When it when it reaches two billion, it will crash. I think I will make it crash much uh, easier and sooner. How? How can I do that? I will increase the rate of increase like this. So at each loop, it will increase by, let's say, 300 million. So let's try it and you will see what I mean. Okay, it is crashed. However, something is surpassing that crash error. This is really interesting. Normally, I would accept application to be crash. I think it is due to .NET Core feature. .NET Core is probably preventing application from full crash. Okay, it has added 100. Then it will have add uh, 300 million then it will add 600 million then it will add 900 million okay let's continue okay uh, okay and at the next loop it is supposed to crash let's see yes Oh, I see. So when an error happens here, it has silently surpassed that error and it gets out of the loop. So when your number reaches to 300 million, it, it did get out of the loop. And I want to try, try this behavior on .NET framework instead of .NET console. I wonder if it is the same. Or let's ju just try with command window .NET framework. It doesn't matter. Okay, let's let's try with VPF. Okay, this is .NET framework. We were working with .NET Core, and I'm going to open .NET framework, and I'm going to name it as. Uh, lecture 6 uh, test uh, behavior we should be able to copy paste uh, elements from this project to other project so I have clicked the button and I have clicked ctrl C and I'm going to uh, paste it into the new project waiting it to be opened okay 
Okay. Uh, okay, pasted the button. You see it is pasted. Then I'm going to click uh, okay this event enter or double click. Okay, it is composed. And I'm going to just copy paste this. I also need to define the index first to to make it work. You see this it says this is not existing in the current context. Therefore, I am defining it like this. Then I am running the application. Okay, when I click the button. Okay, so this is the behavior of a for loop, I guess. Let's check it. Okay, it is already asked, as you can see, incrementing an integer value beyond its integer limit, which we were doing. And so let's see the answer. It says it will run forever, however, it is not running. Okay, in our case, it is not generating uh, generating, uh, let's say, infinite loop, but it is just silently uh, handling the overflow here. So I'm going to close this. So it is the same for .NET Framework or Core. However, if you make it like this. This means that it will be, this is equal to, by the way, plus, okay. Uh, this time we are sure to get an overflow here. Let's try it. I am sure we will get an error here. In here, it was silently handling the error. Okay. However, in here, there is no uh, silent handling. Okay, it still didn't give any error. I am um, shocked. Let's do a debug to see. 600. Oh, it will be still handled there. Okay. Oh. You see now it is negative. Do you know why? Because we have over... Oh, I see, I see now. Since we have surpassed the maximum limit, now it is represented as minus. And therefore, it will become minus and it will become negative and positive at each turn or it will get weird numbers. Okay, you see it is either minus or it is either negative or positive and the loop has ended. Okay, so this causes an unexpected behavior because this is signed integer. If I make it unsigned integer, let's see what happens. Oh, this time my uh, list is giving error. I'm just commenting out this. 
in unsigned integer it may uh, throw an error at this line okay i am going to check it because signed integer was causing an unexpected behavior okay the application either crash it or running for forever okay yeah it is running forever due to infinite loop okay so you should be careful with uh, definitions therefore uh, in any case this was an incorrect uh, writing uh, that's why i wanted to show you so how can we fix this we can fix this like i'm going to make it fix it like this negative 10 so i'm going to return back this to integers and removing this okay so let's guess the numbers that will be added to the list in this case it will start with 100 and it will get added to 100 then it will be subtracted by 10 and the loop will continue then uh, 19 90 will be added then 80 will be added 70 60 50 40 30 20 and will 10 be added no when it is 10 since this condition will become false it will end the for loop okay let me show you what i mean so it is all about this condition is either true or false whenever this condition becomes uh, false it will end the loop okay you see exactly as we have typed it The condition check it here is this one okay now i will show you another uh, thing about for loop it will be an interesting one okay and let's make it over two so what would be the value s gradient in this time we can also write it like this uh in c sharp it is not uh position sensitive i think i don't know what the true term to call this uh so it is not breaking line sensitive you can write the uh, code like this as well the format depends on you it checks the starting parentheses ending parentheses and the semicolon okay so the scope and the code is determined by starting and ending ending parentheses and this semicolons okay uh, you see semicolons are here as well they are important so what would be the value in this case so it will start with 100 then it will get halved in halved and then it will be 50 then it will become 25 and then it will become 12 because when you since this is integer and not floating number it would be rounded to the bottom then it would become six and six wouldn't be added so the result would be like this let's try it oh we didn't clear the uh, list let's clear the list first so i'm going to clear the list okay 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 
so it has 150 25 and 12 as i said okay so now i will show you another more interesting thing we can define our conditions and other things uh, as we want like this common index equal to zero then this time i will just leave the first part as empty okay like this ah okay so now it is giving me error why because there is no such object as i are starting index anymore in this scope because we didn't define it but i have defined it, another integer here and this integer exists in the scope after it is defined so i can write it like this and this will work the say as above okay let's try it so i'm going to write it like this to uh, reduce your confusion okay Okay, let's uh, try it. I'm going to put a breakpoint. Okay. Okay, you see same. And however, there will be a difference this time because this IR common index will stay even after the loop. You see its final value is the final value of IR common index is 6 as you can see. Okay. It is not anymore 100 because whatever you do here is apply it and valid. Okay. And then I am going to clear again. You see I can't define it again because it is already defined in this context and this context is being inside its scope the scope starts from here and ends here you see when i uh, click front of it it also highlights the starting and ending of the scope like this okay and so i need to remove the redefinition like this so this is a this is an assignment and when i put uh, the type of the object in front of it it is a definition okay Okay, this is not rather initialization, but it could be counted. Okay. And I am going to remove this as well because I don't need it. However, for this loop to be ended somehow, I need to make the condition here because this loop uh, would run forever. Okay. Uh, you, we can try let's run the application and it will never end okay you see it is never ending and its memory size is increasing and the cpu is high i'm going to pause it because i don't want my computers to crash so I'm going to comment this so that you can know it. 
and what I'm going to do is I am adding this condition inside the loop okay now this is this is same as this one and this one is same as this one so all three of them is exactly same okay and let's run the application to see okay let's check the list okay you see they are exactly same so i'm going to take a pause for a while okay so uh, then let's show each of the uh, elements of uh, this list in message box to do that i'm going to do for then for snippets appear then i do double tap and get uh, this uh, uh, structure of loop so it will be looping until the end of uh, the list and each time i will pa uh, show the elements of the list at each iteration you see to do that i am providing i as index and it's starting from zero it is uh, going until the uh, number of elements in the uh, list and i also have to turn it into str string so i am using to string method of integers this to string method turns integer into a string okay so this way i am looping through every element of this uh, list how am i doing that it's simple basically starting from index 0 until the last index which is equal to uh, number of elements inside the list minus 1 because uh, the list index starting from 0 so 150 uh, 25 12 okay okay so we have seen uh, all the cases of for usage i think if you still have questions you can ask me through or ask your uh, uh, friends through discord channel or discord channel so let's see for each loop uh, for each for each loop uh, is used to iterate through elements of uh, a list or array or multiple elements including objects okay uh, so i am going to write this as a for each loop by the way this can be written as like this if there is no uh, other thing uh, after uh, the for of if the first line uh, method still works i mean if you are writing only a single line after for loop or if else or other things uh, you don't have to use uh, square brackets okay this works however when you put like this this will not work okay you see the i doesn't exist in the current context because it only exists after uh, the first line of uh, the for
Okay, I'm going to comment this out uh, to don't uh, break our application flow or let's just leave them be. So I'm going to add another button uh, to uh, make example of for each. So I'm going to make it like this. I could also copy and paste this one. So I'm going to type its name from equal to uh, by the way this has a name value and this has x name value uh, they are working pretty much same uh, so don't bother with them at the moment so the content will be I'm going to set the font size equal to 20 okay and i'm going to define a click event i can also put a new line here for better readability to define click event i'm going to write like this oh. click you see equal to then it shows me to create a new event handler i am getting that and clicking enter so it has automatically Define it a click event at the uh, back code. Okay. Okay, here is our method. This time we are going to use for each. Uh, so let's define a list and array to make example. new list okay i am defining a list like this cat mouse dog and lion okay then i can add more elements to this list like this add okay let's add uh bird eagle okay then i am going to show each of them inside a for each loop okay currently okay okay you see this is not working because you can add one by one or as at range if you use at range it takes a string collection in this case you have to make it like leave this string like this okay so you can make it like this or you can make it like let's make um, uh, what animals uh, to add let's add fox uh, let's uh, let's add another this time i'm going to add oh okay so i can print each of them with a method like here with a for loop or here and i can use alternatively for each so the for each when you type for for and then when you click double tap you can see it like this it will generate it like this or you can type it fully like this for each open and closing parameters then you define an item of the same type of the list that you are going to iterate so you can do either item we are my animal then in in which list it will be in my animal list okay alternatively you see this will be a string you could do it like this as well string as are my animal okay both works uh, both of them uh, is same then like this message box show 
these are my animal so it will iterate each of the uh, element with an order with the same order as they are uh, inside the list and you can use uh, each element inside the, its scope okay for each loop is pretty simple however there is some restrictions okay so currently uh, this is not existing yet in our context it is not even defined this is all of course defined here and it exists you see so first it will take cat from the list because it is index zero okay so it starts from the iterating list then it is getting the cat showing cat then moving it takes in parameter again getting that okay then it is getting the in command okay uh, I wonder if there were any other comments okay, we can see it from here as well or oh, we can see yeah it takes always in I suppose So I'm going to find its official documentation. Okay, it takes in. Uh, okay. The for each statement isn't limited to those types. You can use it with an instance of any type that satisfies the following conditions. So which conditions? A type has the public parameterless get enumerator method whose return type is either class, struct, or interface type. Beginning with C sharp 9.0, the get enumerator method can be a type's extension method. The return type of the get enumerator method has the public current property and the public parameterless move next method whose return type is Boolean. Okay, so it uses inside current and uh, move next and okay always in is used okay um okay so this is basically the for each method it is pretty simple however there is one rule uh which is what you can't modify this uh, list when you are enumerating it okay for example i can't do this This will break my enumeration. Therefore, therefore, my application will crash. Let me show you the error it will throw. Okay, you see, system invalid operation exception. Collection was modified. Enumeration operation may not execute. Okay. So this will throw error. What what else we could do? Instead, we can use for loop. Let me show you. For list uh, count. Okay. And then what we are going to do is like this. Add and let's edit only one time or we can add multiple times if e equal equal to at a new animal or i'm going to use insert method to insert into a specific uh, index so it will be inserted to two. Then uh, I am going to uh, oh let's insert it to three. Okay. 
So we will not lose any of the uh, element. And then message box show my animal list I. Let's see how it uh, will print. Okay, I'm putting a breakpoint. You can't also delete from the list in for each any uh, modification to the enumeration will throw error. Okay, so it starts with uh, zero and it should be cat, mouse, dog, lion, bird. Let's see the order. Cat, mouse, dog, new animal, lion, bird. As you can see, it is perfectly working as expected. And I wonder if this was working or not. This could be working. If. Equal equal to. Let's make it lion. Then let's modify an element of animal list. With. Uh, let's say I will modify the element 7 index 7 as big o okay or following let's see if this is giving an error Yes, you see the collection was modified, therefore enumeration may not execute. However, uh, I could do it like this and this would work. If I get this into a new list, turn this uh, list into a new list, it would work. How can I do that? I can do that as like this with link you. We will see in future lessons to list. So the to list method will compose a new list. Therefore, when I modify this list, it will not be the iterating list. Okay. So let me uh, change it. Okay, so uh, let me show you what I mean. I am putting a breakpoint here. It will uh, show the original list. Actually, it will not show anything because we are not showing a message box. And it will it will iterate the original list here. But when the list element is lion, it will change the uh, seventh index. Uh, element to the browsing all you see now it is working and it's changed and uh, this also works to modify original array okay so basically we have created a copy of the original array and we have a loop through it not the original array By the way, this copy is a deep copy. All right, so we have seen the for each loop as well. For each is extremely useful. 
because it is easier to code, easier to read. Um, if you are not going to modify uh, the enumerating enumerated list, Okay, so uh, we have used a list uh, example. However, it would work with uh, arrays as well. For example, integer array. And could we iterate through multi-dimension integer array? Let's try it. New array new integer array and i am going to set it like this so it will be like this since it will be two dimensional three three let's make it three and four five six okay so this will be uh like this three uh two and three yes or if i leave it like this it would work so this is equal to this below one let's run each of them okay i'm going to comment this out or not this one comment the message box so we can so our application can move to that point immediately okay so you see two uh, and three dimensional array i mean at the first dimension uh, there are two objects i mean this is a two product three dimensional matrix okay that's a better definition so you see it is defined like this and this also works okay so this is this means two columns and three rows for per uh, input you see and let's try to iterate it with for each and see the behavior. You see, we are pair record is integer in this case. one two three four five six okay so it is looping through as we can see the same as in uh, debug mode what i mean is when you hover your mouse you will see it is like this okay so it is starting from zero 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 one zero two and then one zero one 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 two i could also iterate only certain dimension like uh, i think it was like this so this would get the only mm, or not like this No, not this one. 
anything like this. Right there, we can see the Okay, this is the same example as we did. Okay, and I am trying to... Hmm. I'm trying to do it with uh, for each. Yeah, looks like not possible. Okay. Yeah. You can do it with four, however, you, you can't do it with uh, four each. Okay. So I can't just iterate this or this. Looks like we there for each. It could be done with four method. Okay. And let's see. The next one is do. Two example. Or before do, let's see the while. So this time I will use copy and paste. I have clicked it, the button is selected. I have clicked Ctrl C and Ctrl V. Sorry, use the invalid markup because I did it here. Or I can do it here as well. I did Ctrl C and I did Ctrl V. Then you see now since they have same name, I am making this as ET and uh, while example and i'm making is its content as while loop you see now they are uh, put on the same place so i am moving the one like this you could also do it from here as margin and i'm going to change its click event to another one i will define a new click event new event handler so it is done you see in the cs code uh, it is created here so the while loop basically when i double tap it is like this so there is a condition and as long as that condition is true it just loops forever so until this condition is dissatisfied it loops forever for example uh, let's make example so yeah number and then i can break the loop like by the way we can break any of these loops like this let's make an example if i equal to one break so this will break this loop you see it is highlighting which loop will be broken you see or same could be applied here for example uh, i'm going to okay break this would also break this for each loop same and i will show the number and if number is number percent five equal to zero i will call the break this means that when you uh, take a percentage of number actually this is called as 
let's see from the definition Okay, so this is, I'm trying to find the name of the operator in this case. Okay, so this is reminder operator. Computes the remainder after dividing its left operand by its right operand. Okay, so if the reminder of 5 is equal to 0, it will break the loop. I am starting it from 0, therefore I have to add another condition. 0, okay. Because 0 reminding everything is 0 as you can guess so it will run until 5 then it will get into the break i am putting a breakpoint here to see it 0 0 0 0 so this will run forever because we didn't increase our counter which is this one i'm going to rename it to as counter you see after i have renamed it there is a rename ir number to ir counter feature uh, has appeared so i'm clicking so everything is renamed which was referencing to that uh, parameters zero 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 okay it is still going forever because we still didn't increase our counter after each iteration uh, so let's try zero one two three four five and then it will break why because five reminder five is zero so the condition is true as you can see therefore it breaks the while loop so uh, the while loop until the loop is broken okay i could also make it like this while your counter is bigger than or smaller than uh, six so let's see it i'm going to comment this out so this will also run forever until this condition is not true okay five and uh, the counter has continued from the previous value so therefore i am going to reset it like this in this case the condition was always true therefore the only way was breaking loop Okay. 
Okay, so I did reset reset the counter and let's see uh, which uh, values will be printed. It will be same. Zero, one, two, three, four, five, and after five here it becomes six and when the check is done it will be broken uh, so i am going to put a breakpoint here because it will continue from there okay you, you see the counter is five then i move to the next step you see the now counter is six and from there it will move here and it will check the condition so the condition is now false therefore it will exit so this will not be executed again okay so this is the while loop and there is also do while which is another type of looping so i'm going to copy paste this one second okay when you copy paste the entire button from this design interface it automatically adds copy to end of the name therefore it automatically works loop and i'm going to name it as do while loop and i am going to compose a new event new click event okay so now when I type do, you see the code snippet again appears and it is like this. Okay. So this is not much different than while. This time it does the thing, then checks the condition. So let's make uh, it same as above and see how it behaves and I'm going to make it like this and message box show counter. So let's see will there be any difference this time. Zero, one, two, three, four. And after showing four, let's see how it behaves. I mean five. Counter is five. Now the counter is six now it is checking the condition the condition is false and it is ending so you see it is basically same as this while loop you can also write it like this or this okay both works you can also search Google to find if there are any other differences. C sharp. Okay, so this is while loop. Okay, so the difference is coming from here. Let me show you. I am going to make it like this. So I am setting the counter six. Okay, I'm going to remove this. And this will be the first case in the while loop. And in here, I'm going to set the counter as six and i'm going to comment out this one okay so how would this versus this behave this would never get inside the while loop let me show what i mean so the first condition it will be checked and if it is not satisfied the while loop will never run okay so the counter is six and this is already false therefore uh, the loop never 
uh, work it never enter it inside the loop here and let's see in this case okay so you see it will first run the body here so the message will be displayed you see then it will increase the counter then it will check here and since it is false it will be broken so you see the difference the difference is where uh, the condition is checked in while loop the condition is checked before starting the loop in the do while loop the condition is checked after at least one time the loop is iterated the loop is run so this is the difference you see let's remove all the breakpoints okay with while loop nothing is displayed and with two while loop the six the value six is displayed so this is the difference between the main difference between do while and while okay so there is a thread sleep so everything in our uh, software is currently running inside uh, the main thread and we can pause the execution uh, for certain amount of time as we want what i mean is I'm going to copy and paste this to show a uh, thread sleep method. We will see more about threads in future. However, if you have watched this uh, playlist that I have shown you at the beginning of the course, this computer science playlist, uh, you already have idea about threads okay if you remember the crash course list to open it i am downloading the pdf file opening pdf then you can directly click uh, the link to get started the playlist okay in hello this, world i'm carrie ann philbin in this playlist uh, everything is extremely well explained so uh, you can see the threads uh, in this list. I don't know which course was it, in which course was it. However, I believe they were explaining the threads as well. Anyway, it is not very important at the moment. We will just uh, make example of pausing our application uh, running. So I will name it as BTN thread sleep example and let's sleep example okay i am going to use the second uh vpf control i mean uh, uh, vpf control for today which is a label okay label is a text that can display any value we can set programmatically so i am setting the label area like this i am going to name the default label value as let's say counter i'm giving it a name therefore to be able to access it from background code uh, let me show what i mean let's compose the click event of thread sleep example click new event handler okay Okay, I will compose it from properties window. Okay, one second. My computer is a bit slow. Okay, I have selected the button and now I can compose the event I want. I'm going to compose click event, double clicking. Okay, it is composed. Okay so to be able to access this label i need a unique identifier for it in this case it is name so you see it doesn't have any name at the moment so i can't uh, access to that label from here whatever i write it is not available 
So I am first giving it a unique name. Name equal to label counters. Well, let's call it as label counters. Like this label counter. Okay. Then to access it, uh, I can now access it from background code as label counter and then access uh, set any value to its content like test content so let's run the application to see you see this is a field label is a field we will see more about fields and what are they in future so when i click my thread slip example button this counter text will change now it is test content let's also change the feature of our uh, label counter font display so from here i am going to return the properties i am changing the font size so let's make it at ms and let's change its pixel size to 16 or perhaps 18 and change its uh, colors from no appearance paragraph line in that list okay layout brush perhaps brush okay there is background okay foreground is the text color and how do i set it color resources solid color brush you see it changes whenever i click here however i can't find Oh, okay now it appeared here and i'm going to set it to any value you see the value has been changed from here okay let's make the color like this okay and i can change the background color as well currently it is uh, transparent and to change it uh, how do i change it Okay, it is transparent. Okay, like this, I can change it. Okay, let's change the label color like this. Okay. So now I can set the, its content. What I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to compose a permanent uh, while loop which will run forever. Then I will change its uh, content uh, like this. Equal to. And I'm going to define an index uh, counter equal to zero counter value. Then what I'm going to do is uh, I will assign a system threading thread slip. It is based on milliseconds, so one product one thousand means one second. Okay. And I will increase the counter at every loop. So what will I see in this case? Okay. Unfortunately, I will not see anything because this application is running in the main thread. Therefore, the main thread is block it until this method call is executed and this method call never uh, gets uh, fully executed because it is running forever therefore i need something else as well which is uh, i need to update the label content with dispatcher begin invoke and it was something like this i'm not sure um it was we were typing delegate 
something like this or like this you don't have to understand this at the moment like this so Dispatches within in log label. Okay, like this. So I'm going to just copy paste it. Dispatcher begin invoke action. However, this, uh, this one has an error. Okay, so this answer is not working. Okay, so the question is updating label in runtime. Okay, here. I think this is a working example. This special begin invoke. In this case, our label name is this. So inside here, I can use, I think, this. Okay, I'm just going to set the uh, content as like this. I'm going to remove this. Okay. Remove this line as well. Okay. So now running the application again. With this way, I can update the interface. Uh, even if the main thread is uh, frozen, we will see about threads in future don't get uh, stuck to that. Just see how the uh, sleep works. Okay, this is still uh, I'm breaking the, our uh, application running. So I need to start it as a task factory. Inside that, I'm going to use my while true loop. Okay, now it will work. So I'm creating a subtask to prevent freeze of the user interface. I know this is a pretty complex example, but it will show you the example of thread slip. Okay, now it is updating the user interface. Oh, I see setting as this has changed the entire interface so i'm just changing the content of the label okay so now every second my uh, user interface is updated and uh, my counter is updated as well so this is about thread sleeping if i change the sleep time let's say let's make it 10 milliseconds only so this loop will continue every 10 milliseconds okay run, let's run it again whenever the application comes here it will just pause 10 milliseconds then continue this is what it does Okay, you see now with every 10 milliseconds it is updating the loop is continuing and this was a pretty complex example let's make a simpler example so i'm going to just uh, comment this out and make another example so i'm going to make a list string dates new list string and I'm going to make a for loop with 100 milliseconds. Let's make our 
I mean 10 until 10 and I will add the date of the time daytime and now to string so this is daytime object and after that I will put a thread threading sleep stem uh, thread threading sleep and let's make it pause for uh, two seconds okay two product 1000 so this is in milliseconds and let's see the dates after the application has completed executing this method okay now the application is frozen because it is still executing this method and after each for loop it is waiting two seconds so after 20 seconds i will the application will get into this point and we will be able to see timings inside list of dates okay let's see the timings okay so you see it has two seconds difference between each uh, list insertion okay i could make this as uh, even bigger or slower it is whatever as i want okay label vpf text box and try parse okay so i am going to uh, increase the example complexity a bit let's move this label into a little bit a little bit button let's move it then let's add a text box from this test text box we are going to get uh, the looping uh, uh, sleep uh, milliseconds so first we need to give it a name as always to access from background code uh, ms then let's give a default text text sleep ms by default uh, 500 milliseconds okay and let's change its font size to uh, 20 okay so what will this text box do text box are boxes that uh, users can type anything based on the restrictions that you put currently we didn't put any this this uh, restriction uh, text wrapping is enabled okay so i'm returning back to my example i am this time uh, commenting this and recommending this this one so instead of manually this defining the thread slip i am going to set uh, thread slip uh, ms which will be 1000 and i am going to use in try parse method which takes a string output uh, string and integer out as a result okay so uh, string will be text box from text box text and out will be the uh, this integer so this will return a boolean uh, parsing result so if parsing result is failed i will reassign the default value so how am i going to see it like this uh, okay so if parsing result was failed so i am going to use uh this negation i'm going to reassign the default value as 1000 and if it was successful it will be already that value this is how try parse works it uh, you see if it is true uh, the number will be already assigned and if it's false if the input 
input text was another numeric value uh, the number will be equal to zero therefore i have to reassign it and then we will use this value here okay so this is dynamically getting value from the user let's try it each time you are making a change you should debug and see with uh, see step by step whether your uh, change was successful or not okay so can you convert this text into the numeric value successfully no it will fail so let's try i have click it and i have assigned it 1000 to my thread sleep ms and it will try to parse it from this text so the parse has failed because the text was not a numeric value so since parsing result was incorrect and i use it negation so this this is equal to the equal equal false so i am going to reassign it to 1000 so you see it has become zero when this was failed so this is equal to false and if i don't use try parse and if i use it like this directly equal to convert to integer from text if the input is not correct it will cause my application to crash okay let me show again what i mean so i'm clicking and i continue so you see input string was not in correct for format so this causes a system format exception exception unhandled alternatively alternatively we could use try catch method however it is more expensive than try parse let me show it try catch so we try uh, it's like this and if an error happens i don't need the exception here what i'm going to do is reset it to 1000 this also works crash however uh, this is more uh, let's say uh, expensive in terms of system resources usage then try parse method the try parse method is appropriate way okay so this also works however try parse is the best method okay so with this way we are going to take a uh, let's say the duration of the sleep from users first i am going to make it as um, three seconds okay like this three seconds okay i'm going to continue so with every three seconds it will be increasing okay and my application is still responsive because this is now running inside another thread in a, another task we will see them in future in details however this is the only way of updating user interface without blocking it you have to run 
the method that will run forever inside another thread. And I can if I can click this button again, and now uh, two method will run to update it. So I'm just going to restart to not get you more confused. Okay, when I just click it, it the try parse will fail and it will use the default value. Uh, by the way, we have set it default by 1000 ms. So it is getting increased in every second. So let's change, change the default value like this. By the way, you see I have typed manually 1000 and it is a big no-no. You should always use uh, parameters to define default. As 500, then use that value to assign default values. Okay, so whenever you want to change a default value, you just change the value of the main and it is changed at every piece of the code. So you should never do copy paste or manually type the values. Okay, assign them to a variable, then use that variable to use that value. Okay, now it is more proper. Okay, now it will be 500 milliseconds as you can see. And I'm going to restart it. And I'm going to set it as 1 millisecond. Let's see how it works with 1 millisecond. It will also use more CPU. So you see this is the CPU usage. This is how it is increased with one millisecond. All right, I think for today, uh, this is enough. Uh, always, you can ask me questions from my email or from our Discord channel. Our Discord channel is already being useful to uh, students who are already using it you can ask in the specific channel or from uh, our uh, general channel as like this you see this is our general channel and you can join uh, the introduction to programming channel from here so you see now I have joined it I'm going to leave the channel so no confusion. This is my temporary account, by the way. And let's write the today's context. Okay. Uh, uh, um, So what we have see, shown today works uh, while loop let's just for I'm just going to copy paste it. Works and do while loop in details how do while loop works and project let's open the let's write the full name of bpf as well which is a uh, windows presentation foundation okay uh, 
labeled for PPF. What else? We have seen. Okay. Method. Okay. Okay. How to use a task factory? Uh, dispatch a begin invoke. Update UI without using you are okay by the way uh, if our method is not permanently running we can still update the user interface uh, like this let me show you you don't have to write uh, uh, let's say a new task to update user interface uh, user interface will be blocked until just your method gets executed interface okay let's uh, change its content So within this content, what I'm going to do is uh, for 10, and I'm just going to use this one. I'm going to remove this. Uh, I'm going to use I these days. Okay, and I'm going to sleep with uh, 20, let's say, 500 milliseconds so what i am going to see here is in this case it will be just nine because until uh, the method execution ends my screen will be completely frozen let me show you so you see the counter is not updated we are waiting we will wait about uh, five seconds and you see now it is updated so this is the difference of working in a uh, user interface thread and you working with sub threads you see whenever i click the button the interface is frozen until the execution of button the execution of method called is ending okay it have uh okay so i think this is enough uh, explanation uh, try to understand everything we have shown in this lecture uh, uh, if there were no uh, thread slip here it would be immediately updated because the for loop would be immediately ending 
However, we would still see as still see the nine as a result as a content of the label. Let me show. You see, it is nine because the loop is ending immediately and the interface is being updated immediately. Okay. All right. I am going to upload. Uh, so I am going to just uh, organize the code. To do that, I am clicking Control K and then Control. You see at the bottom it shows me that Control K was pressed. Then I am pressing the Control D. So it is reorganizing the code. And I am going to upload this lecture source code to our GitHub repository. So let's open another Git page. Okay, it didn't log in, so it is not working. I will start it from here. Okay, it is logged in. Okay, 2020. Source code upload of lecture X. Okay, all the code we have, all the coding we have done in this lecture is being uploaded. Okay, it is uploaded. Okay, uh, you see it, it is here. Uh, this is the end of lecture. We are always looking for volunteers to fix the subtitles of our uh, videos. Uh, current list of subtitle project volunteers as like this. So we need volunteers for lecture five and lecture six. Okay, hopefully see you next week. End of lecture.